The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> it's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of a complete line of famous quality food products. For the past couple of weeks, we have been recalling to you some of the great Gildersleeve's early experiences. Tonight, the great man wants to talk about one of the biggest days in his whole life. We give you now Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Well, sir, as long as I live, I'll never forget last Fourth of July. <laughs> what a day. That was the day of the first annual outing of the Jolly Boys Social Club. Come one, come all, and bring your friends. I'd been up late the night before with the committee on arrangements... And I was planning to celebrate the anniversary of the independence of our country by sleeping a little late that morning. Huh. About seven o'clock, outside my window... Leroy! Happy Fourth of July, Unc! Yes, yes. There was a war on then. That was only a year ago. Can you believe it? You couldn't buy fireworks anywhere in those days. But breeze there a boy with soul so dead he can't find some way to blow himself up on the fourth? I figured I'd better get down there and see what... Leroy, whatever you're doing, stop it. I'm not doing anything, Unc. Don't tell me that. I've got ears. Or I did have. I'm just blowing up a tin can is all. Gosh, it's the 4th of July. Well, hold your fire till I can get down there. You can't deny a small boy the 4th of July. That's his day. But I still remember the time I made the mistake of carrying a three-inch salute in my hip pocket. And my best friend sneaked up on me with a piece of punk. It was burned in my memory. <laughs> I didn't want anything like that to happen to Leroy, so I got up and shaved and got dressed. Put on my white Palm Beach suit and my white canvas shoes that I hadn't worn in years and hurried downstairs. Breakfast was a rather disordered meal that day. I guess we were all a little excited. Marjorie kept jumping up and down and rushing off places. I finally told her to sit down. Marjorie, I said, for heaven's sake, light somewhere. But I'm all through, Uncle Moore. I don't care. Sit down. You make me nervous. But I'm supposed to be helping Bertie make the lunch. That can wait till after breakfast. One thing at a time here. Where's my cereal? Leroy, wipe your chin. Bertie, I'm ready for my cereal. I'm coming. We ought to get a bell. Here you are, Mr. Gillsleeve. Leroy, how about you? Oh, I am fine, thank you. What's this you've given me, Bertie? That's it. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's the chop olives for the sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> olives are my favorite fruit, Bertie, but not for breakfast. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Gillsleeve. That what comes from making lunch and breakfast at the same time. I only hope I didn't go and spread the oatmeal on the sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bertie's a scream this morning. How do you like her with that cap over her eye? <laughs> I really ought to go out there and help her. Sit still, my dear. It'll only add to the confusion. She'll fight her way out of this. What time are we leaving for the picnic grounds, Unky? Well, Floyd should be coming by here for us about 11. Floyd Munson? Are we going with him? Yeah, he's going to get his cousin's hay wagon. We'll all ride out together. Everybody. Big excursion. Oh, how wonderful. A hay ride. I've got to run right over and tell Marshall. Yeah, Marshall will find out. You stay right where you are. A hay ride? Oh, this is going to be more fun. Unky, I think you were a darling to arrange it. Yeah. <laughs> And don't you look pretty in your nice white suit? Doesn't he look pretty, Leroy? He looks like the good humor man. <laughs> I feel like the good humor man, Leroy. Yes, sir, nobody's going to make me mad today. But don't keep trying, Leroy. <laughs> Well, we had work to do that morning, but all of a sudden, nothing would do. We should drop everything and hang out the flag. Well, what's the use of having a flag if you don't hang it out on the 4th of July? <laughs> all right. So you tramp upstairs to the attic. Two flights. <laughs> Extra step. 
Well, you rummage around and you find the flag. Then you open the front attic window. It hasn't any sash cord, so you have to prop it up with a stick. Only you can't find a stick, so you use a coat hanger. I'll go out in the yard, Uncle Morton, see how it looks. Now, Leroy, when I get out the window, you hold on to my legs. What for? You, what for? What do you think? Just hold on to them, that's all. Now, don't let go. Okay. No, no, not yet, Leroy. We'd like it out there. I thought you said to hold on to them. Well, use your head, my boy. Now, <clears throat> you lower the flag out the window, and you squirm part way out yourself. <clears throat> And then you look down. Hold on, Leroy. Oh, sure, that's the time the telephone always rings. Leroy, telephone. For me. Yes, for you. I'll be back, Uncle. Okay. Oh, Leroy. You come back here. Yeah, the little devil. There you are. Half in and half out. Straddling the windowsill on your stomach in a Palm Beach suit that's just been cleaned and too tight. There's only one thing to do. You try to inch your way back in. There you are, teetering in space while your life hangs in the balance. And then it happens. Your elbow hits the hanger, the window drops like a guillotine. Oh, right in the back. You're pinned there like a rat in a trap, clutching at old glory. Four or five hours pass. Maybe it's four or five minutes. You've been hollering as loud as you can with the wind knocked out of you in your heart and your throat. And then some fool happens along and calls to you. What you doing, Throckmorton? Leela! Shoot if you must this old gray head, but spare your country's flag, he said. Leela, help! This is no joke, Leela. I'm stuck. Oh, gracious. Get help! You stay right there, Throckmorton, you hear? I'll be up. Safe at last. Safe again in the bosom of my little family. What might have been an ugly incident was turned into a happy triumph. For old glory waved proudly from our attic window. We all went out front to look at it. And we all agreed that it looked just fine there. It looks just fine there, Throckmorton. Just fine. Fine. It looks beautiful. Yeah. How do you like it, Bertie? Mr. Gillsleeve, if I had my way, I'd leave it there all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, it looked fine. But there were other things to do, and time was wasting, so I gave a few orders. Let's get going here, Bertie. No time to lose. Yes, sir. Now, Marjorie, you help Bertie with the lunch. Okay. Leela, I wonder if you could give him a hand. Well, I have to dress yet, Throckmorton, but I'd be glad to do what I can. Good. Leroy, you carry out the basket and things as they get them packed. Me? Yes, you. What are you going to do? I'm going to sit down on the porch here for a while and think about the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> I sat down on the swing there and lit a cigar. And I thought how different this was from other Fourth of Julys I'd known. How quiet and how nice. And I thought how a man's tastes change as he grows older. Why, when I was a youngster, I lived in a world of high explosives. Dynamite caps, five-inch salutes, red devils, Roman candles, erupting strombolis, 50-cent skyrockets. Uh, I loved them. Not anymore. Suddenly, I looked down the walk, and here came a little boy that might have been me at the age of six. Only it wasn't. It was little Craig Bullard from across the street, and he was pulling a toy cannon. I knew what he was going to say before he said it. Can Leroy play? Well, hello, Craig. That's what you got there. I want Leroy to play with me. Well, Leroy's inside right now. Time to come out. (laughs) Well, he has some work to do, Craig. I want him to come out. Uh, Later, perhaps, later. Uh, who gave you the cannon? My father. Oh, that's fine. Doesn't go off, does it? No, Craig, surely your father's told you not to aim that thing at people. Craig, what are you going to do? I'm going to shoot you. <laughs> now, Craig, 
What's that string for? I'm going to pull it. Don't you shoot that thing. I'm going to pull it. One. Craig, do you hear me? Don't you shoot that. Two. Hey, look, Craig, I thought of a game. Three. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I knew it wouldn't shoot. Hi, Leroy. A uh, little guest to see you, Leroy. Oh, for corn's sake. I'll see you later, Craig. I'm busy. I have a cannon. What's that? I have a cannon. Hey, pretty neat. Let's have a look at it, Craigie, old boy. Maybe I can show you how to shoot it. You do, and I'll shine Why, the... this is one of those carbide cannons. I pull the string and nothing happens. Well, no wonder what you need is carbide. I've got some around in the garage. Come on. Hey, did you ever think of loading it with gravel? Leroy... No carbide, Leroy. But it's meant for carbide. And no gravel. Okay, no gravel, just carbide. And no carbide. Okay. Come on, Craig, I know what we'll do. What were they going to do? I sat there uneasily, wondering how little boys ever lived to reach the age of 12. <laughs> but pretty soon they were back again. Stop it, Craig! Yeah, stop it, you little snitcher! Leroy! Well, he claims he's General Eisenhower. <laughs> Leroy, Craig's a little boy. That's no reason to get angry with him if he wants to imagine things. I'm General Eisenhower. He's Ronald. Yeah. <laughs> now he wants to change sides, the dirty guy. <laughs> he must have discovered how the game comes out. <laughs> take my cat and go home. Yeah, well, that's all right. I think that's a very wise decision, my boy. Very wise indeed. Rommel would have been smart if he'd done the same thing. <laughs> well, so it went. A few laughs, a few fights, a little excitement, and a lot of bustle and preparation. It was noon before we knew it, and the jolly boys were overdue. Leela had gone home to dress, and we were standing on the front porch waiting. Leroy and Marjorie and her boyfriend and I. And the wagon hove in sight. Here it comes. Here it comes, Auntie. Oh, boy, look at it. Yes, sir. It was Floyd's cousin's hay wagon with a nice bed of fresh hay. And there were red, white, and blue bows on the tails of the horses. And somebody had twined red, white, and blue crepe paper through the spokes of the wheels. Floyd's cousin was handling the horses, and Floyd sat on the seat beside him. And believe it or not, he had an accordion. Oh, brother, is that corny? Oh, it's wonderful. Don't you love it, Marshall? Oh, Auntie, I'm so happy. Yeah, don't jump up and down with the thermos bottles, my dear. Oh, ahoy there, Commissioner. Ahoy, jolly boys. Climb aboard. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay, let's get started, huh? Well, they all were. Good old Hooker, good old TV, good old Floyd, and good old Gates. I tell you to look at that good old wagon, all red, white, and blue, and all those fine fellows in it. Well... Made you proud of your country, that's all. I'm glad there was the 4th of July. Come on, come on, what are we waiting for? Yeah, come on, Commissioner. Scramble up there, Leroy. Okay. Up you go, Marjorie. Oh, okay. Next, Gildy. Give him a hand there, somebody. Oh. Don't strain yourself, Mr. Gildy. Hey, hey, hey. Pull those horses oh, there. Oh, 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 now. All together, fellas. Yeah. Up daisy. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, hey, Wink. Huh? Don't forget to stop for the girls. Are you kidding? <laughs> oh, take me out to the lobby. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me something that's a cracker jack. I don't care if I never get back. Yes, sir, it looks like it's going to be a great picnic. You know, when a person's hungry, there's nothing quite so satisfying as a slice of bread with your favorite spread. Well, parquet margarine's my favorite spread, Mr. Lang, but it's often so hard to get. And right now, we're all being asked to go easy on bread, so there'll be more for hungry people who really need it. So surely you're not trying to sell me on the idea of using more. That's right, I'm not. The point I'm trying to make is that bread and spreads are basic, hunger-satisfying foods. Two of the foods most vitally needed in the world today. Here at home, we're fortunate that there's some of both for everyone. 
Not all we'd like, perhaps, but enough. And by conserving bread and spreads when they're in short supply, it helps everyone to get a fair share. That, Mr. Lang, is going to make me use parquet sparingly and to appreciate its fine flavor and food value all the more. And I'd like to just add that Kraft will continue to make all the parquet margarine possible under present conditions and distribute it as fairly as we can. Thanks again for being so patient when supplies of parquet are temporarily limited. Yes, sir, quite a day, the 4th of July. Everybody had a good time riding out to the picnic grounds. Leroy was up front with the driver. Marjorie and Marshall Bullard sat together, talking very seriously. Floyd was playing his accordion. Mostly requests from Eve Goodwin and Leela Ransom. Sounded pretty good. Floyd was all dressed up for a day in the country with white sports shoes. Judge Hooker had on a pair of golf knickers he dug up someplace. I never knew the judge was bow-legged before. That'll do, Leroy. Eve Goodwin was looking very pretty with a big straw hat on. Leela was wearing something she called a play suit. Didn't you ever hear of a play suit, Trock Martin? No, but I like it. What'll we play? <laughs> oh, you. <laughs> well, we got out to the grounds in about an hour. Nice woodsy spot besides a little stream. Quite a good deep pool at one point. We unloaded the baskets with the food. Everything was so peaceful for a few minutes. Just pile all that stuff over here, boys, under the tree. What about putting it out here in the open? I prefer to have it under the tree, Floyd, and since I'm to be the chef... Who said you were going to be the chef, Judge? Well, naturally, I assumed that... Well, just turn off your assumer. You're assuming too fast. Yeah, I'm pretty fair-handed at a barbecue myself. I will attend to the barbecuing, Floyd. Who said so? What? It just so happens, Gildy, that my recipe for barbecued frankfurters is acknowledged the best in town. Uh, not by me, it ain't. I got a sauce makes a hot dog taste like filet mignon. Well, my sauce makes it taste like a hot dog. I, I still say if you have any regard for our guests, you let me be the chef. Oh, is now, that so? Now, yes, no, wait a minute. Fellas, fellas, fellas. fellas, is this any way to behave? Why, what'll our guests think of the Jolly Boys? Gee, I never thought of that. We've got an organization with a reputation to maintain. Summerfield has its eye on the Jolly Boys Club. Chief Gates is right, fellas. I'll withdraw my claim to the chef's job. So will I. You take it, Floyd. No, Judge, you take it. Oh, no. Well, then let Gildersleeve have it. Oh, no, not me. Well, for heaven's sake... You asked for it in the first place, Judge. That has nothing to do with it. The oh, idea. I've never seen such a thing. Yacht and football. Let's be jolly boys, shall we? So harmony finally prevailed. We made Hooker chef, and then somehow I got stuck with the job of collecting wood for a fire. So naturally, I went looking for Leroy. I finally found him down by the creek. Leroy, put your shoes on. I want you to gather some wood for a fire. Oh, no. Now, Leroy. I'm working on an important project. I can't stop in the middle of it. What is the project? I'm improving the swimming hole. Everybody will be grateful when it's done. There's nothing the matter with the swimming hole, my boy. It doesn't need any projects. Are you kidding? It isn't deep enough. I can't even get over my head. It isn't necessary to drown to have a good time, my boy. Now, put on your shoes. Oh, please. I'll, I'll get the firewood later. Can't I just build a small dam? Well, all right. But building a dam is harder than you think. Well, if a dumb animal can do it, I can do it. Gosh, a beaver. They chew down trees with their teeth and then slap the mud on with their tails. How are you going to manage that? <laughs> Sit on it. Or maybe you could sit on it. That'd be better. Leroy! If you're going to play in the water, put on your bathing suit. Well, I finally got Marjorie and Marshall Buller to go out and collect firewood. They'd been mooning around with nothing to do, and they seemed glad of an excuse to go off for a walk by themselves. Of course, when they came back an hour later, they'd forgotten to bring any firewood. But they didn't seem to mind going back for some more. Although, by that time, the rest of us were getting ready to go swimming. Say, Kamesh, that school teacher don't look bad in a bathing suit, does she? Miss Goodwin is a lady, Floyd. Did I say she wasn't? Ransom ain't bad, either. Are you referring to Mrs. Ransom? Well, sure. What's the matter? 
You better watch your step there, Floyd. Remember, Mr. Gildersleeve's been engaged to practically every woman on this picnic. Now she hear you, folks. Only kidding, Commissioner, weren't we, Floyd? Well, I thought so. Come on, let's go swimming. Well, gentlemen, off for a plunge in the brook? Phoebe. Come on, get into your bathing suit. No, no, thanks, Mr. Gildersleeve. Not today. Oh, come on, Peeve. It'll cool you off. No, no, really. The fact is, I'm not much of a swimmer. Oh, just float, then. Anybody can float. Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I've always had trouble floating. Oh, well, there's nothing to it, Peeve. Just lie on your back and don't move. And that's what they always told me. Well? And every time I try it, water goes up my nose. Well, your head must be heavier than your feet. That's what I say. You two, aren't you all going in the water? We'll be right there, Leela. We're trying to get Peavy to come along. What, Peavy? Not going swimming? Uh, no, Judge, not today. Well, good way to work up an appetite, Peavy. Well, I dare say, but the uh, fact is, gentlemen, I promised Mrs. Peavy I wouldn't go. She has a theory it's uh, bad to go in the water on a hot day. That's a lot of baloney. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> not to Mrs. Peavy, anyway. <laughs> Uh, of course, right now, she's out of town. Yeah, that's right. Come on, Peavy. Come on, fellas. Last one into the water is a rotten egg. Come on. Now she's going to get your feet wet. Well, that's no way I want to dive in. Well, I don't think the water's deep enough, Rock Maud. Plenty deep enough for a good diver. You could dive off that rock, Commissioner, if you're really good. Let's see you dive off the rock, Unc. Well, that's pretty high. What's the matter? You afraid? Well, no, but no, I'm not afraid. I'll show you by George. You want to see me swim underwater, Mrs. Ransom? Can you really? Well, uh, just what? Oh, my goodness. Look at Mr. Munson, Eve. He's actually swimming underwater. Hey, girls, aren't you going to watch me die? Oh, my ankle. <laughs> you think it was a lobster, Mrs. Ransom? It's only me. <laughs> Mess. You cut that off, Floyd. Hey, girls. You want to see me imitate a whale? Oh, I'd love to see that. Well, watch. First, I float on my back. Then... Oh, he's spouting. Oh, <laughs> marvelous. Hey, girls, watch me. I'm going to die. Go ahead, Commissioner. You better get out of the way. Stand back, ladies. Give the man room. Come on, Alex. One, two. Don't rush me, Leroy. Hey, girls, you want to see me stand on my head in the water? Look. Oh, that's marvelous, Oh, who can't do that? Oh, both of them. Don't they look fantastic? <laughs> hey, girls, watch me. I'm going to die. Well, for course sake, go ahead and die. <laughs> oh, look, Eve, here comes Mr. Peavy. Oh, my goodness. That long sleeve bathing suit is hookers. Come on in, Peavy. The water's fine. You no, know, I think I'll just sit on the bank here and dabble my toes. <laughs> Come on up here with me, Peavy, and dive in. You'll get wet faster your way, Peavy. <laughs> What'd you say, Floyd? I didn't say anything. Oh, do come in, Mr. Peavy. The water's lovely. Uh, is it cold? It's just right. Stick your toe in. Well, <laughs> seems nice and moderate. Guess I can risk it. I'll just rub a little water on my chest. <laughs> and on my forehead. And my stomach. <laughs> What's that for, Peavy? That prevents a chill. Look at me, darn it! I wonder if I can remember how to do a duck dive. Uh, would you ladies care to see me do my duck dive? Oh, we certainly would, wouldn't we? I can't think of anything more enjoyable. Hey, here I come! And now you watch. When I wiggle my feet just before they go under, that's the duck's tail feather. Good. Oops, <laughs> there go the tail feathers. <laughs> Look out, everybody! Here I come, and this time I mean it! Oh, 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 oh. Holy cow, he knocked half the water out of the pool. Well, we were all having a good time in the water, but the judge made us come and eat his barbecued frankfurters. His sauce wasn't so much. I only ate six. You ate seven. But I will say, everybody was nice and helped clean up afterward. Even Leroy did a little work. A little? Leroy didn't have time to do much work because Mr. Bullard drove out and took him and Marshall and Marjorie home in his car. That just left the grown-ups to ride back in the hay wagon, and uh, perhaps it was just as well. 
Moonlight's nice tonight, isn't it, Throckmorton? You bet. The moon's awfully pretty tonight, isn't it, Judge? Yes, it is, Leela. It is indeed. The moon's awful pretty tonight, ain't it, Peavy? <laughs> Get away from me, Floyd. <laughs> Are you comfortable, Eve? Mm-hmm, yes. Comfortable, Leela? Yes, thank you. Although the hay gets a little itchy after a while. Are you cold, Eve? Oh, mercy, no. Well, uh, couldn't you pretend you're a little chilly? Now, Throckmorton. I can hear every word you say, Commissioner. Well, play a recording, Floyd, and give <laughs> us a chance. Okay. Floyd played some nice old songs. And Eve snuggled up to me a little. But I couldn't seem to get my mind on her. Maybe it was because I couldn't help noticing the judge kept trying to slide his arm around Leela. Leela's nothing to me, of course. But just the same, when she called over to me... Why don't you sing, Throckmorton? Sing? Hi, George, that's a good idea, Leela. Why don't we all sing? Come on, Floyd, something we all know. Well, let me see... How's that? Oh, that's just the one, Floyd. Okay. Uh, all together now, folks. In the good old summertime, in the good old summertime, strolling through the shady lanes with your baby mind. Hold her hand and she holds yours, and that's a very good song. We hope that all of you can have at least a day this summer as fine as our last 4th of July. This is our last broadcast of the season, but we'll be back again for the Kraft Foods Company on September 11th. If you look at your calendar, you'll find out that September the 11th isn't Sunday at all. It's Wednesday. So you remember that and tell your friends. Next season, you'll hear the great Gildersleeve. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> on Wednesday instead of Sunday. It'll be the same network, and your local paper will give you the time and the station. I guess all the members of our cast are looking forward to their vacations. I'd like to thank every one of them for the nice times we've had together all this year. There's Louise Erickson, who plays Marjorie, Walter Tetley, our little Leroy, and Lillian Randolph, whom you know as Bertie. Getting outside the immediate family, there's Shirley Mitchell, who plays Leela Ransom, and Bea Benaderet, who's Eve Goodwin. Thanks, too, to the Jolly Boys, Arthur Q. Bryan, and Ken Christie, who are Floyd and Chief Gates. And to that not-so-jolly little boy, Tommy Bernard, who plays little Craig. And a jolly Johnny Lang, our announcer. <laughs> and of course, with every season that goes by, we appreciate more and more our two fine old standbys, Earl Ross, who plays Judge Hooker, and Richard Legrand, who is Mr. Peavy. <laughs> As we come to the close of another season of fun on the Great Gildersleeve, we'd like to leave with you this very serious thought. How would your appetite hold up at dinner tonight if a starving child stood at your elbow, a child with hunger biting into his wide eyes and hollow cheeks? Please, just for a moment, pretend that you can see him beside you, this child who has known the worst of war and now faces famine, how when spring is back and our children frolic in the sun, these frail children of Europe and Asia long for bread. Help to feed them, and you can by buying and eating as little wheat and rice as possible, by turning in used fats and oils, eating more of the plentiful foods as much as possible from your own garden, preserving all you do not eat, wasting not a scrap. A child in Europe, when he gets some strength back in his body, will thank you for it. This is NBC, the national broadcast.